going to keep it a little bit more informal. Let's keep it a little bit more informal because uh, there aren't like hundreds of people in the room. So there are like 34, uh, 30, 30 plus people. Um, uh, Luke, maybe you want to quickly, shall we just quick, all four of us very quickly introduce ourselves first? Yeah. Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Luke O'Sullivan, as uh, you can see. Um, I am, along with Loy, one of the proud founders of the PPE program, which we set up, started setting up about six years ago now. And uh, I think I can say it's exceeded expectations. We, we thought it would be popular. We hoped it would be popular. Uh, and my word, it really is popular. Uh, we've uh, actually got a very uh, successful um, degree on our hands we're happy to report and of course we're graduating our first cohort this year uh, and we're very proud of them they've been an excellent bunch uh, and there's more uh, excellent students coming up behind them so um, we hope uh, at least some of you will be interested in joining in the fun thank you yeah exactly yeah uh, the ones who are graduating some of them they're on a grad trip because otherwise i'll twist their arms or make them come today instead right <laughs> yeah so i'm uh, i'm prof Loy from from philosophy and uh, you know, Luke and I were the, the, the what, what do we call these core conspirators, culprits, whatever you call them, you know, <laughs> who somehow got into our heads that we want to help create a PPE program uh, for NUS. Uh, actually, the talks about creating one has gone back much longer than that. But you know, and together with uh, our friend from Econs as well, at, at the time it was Julian, then later Nichun, we managed to create this program. And it's been a very, very exciting ride. Um, we got a you know very good feedback from empl potential employers and all that as well, and uh, you know we have uh, very good students and and it has been a, a cozy cohort uh, because of resource constraints we we can't like just open the gates and let everyone come in but at the same time we try not to operate by a quota system we will operate by a, a essentially a quality kind of system and we give multiple entry points into the program as well you can come in direct entry. Right. And now even for this year, there are two different direct entry. There's NUS college, you can do it through there or you come in without NUS college. And even if you don't come in that way, let's say you are in CHS, if you, you know, meet the requirements, if you read the modules, uh, after the first year, you can still, you know, you can still come in after your, your first year. Okay. And, and uh, the, the difference in the, what you're studying between the direct entry people and people who come in the, you know, after your first year is actually the same. So there's no, there's no issue there as well. Okay, but let, let me have the two students who are with us today to introduce themselves. Nell and uh, Kaylin, who wants to go first? Yeah. Nell, go ahead, <laughs> introduce yourself. Okay, so hi everyone. I'm Nell, a year three PP student. Mm -hmm. So that means I matriculated in 2019. Yes, oh my God, so old already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have a second major in history. So if anyone is interested to take a second major or minor here, feel free to ask away about that. But I will reserve more details about myself later. Yeah, so Kaylin, please. Yeah, so hi, I'm Kaylin. Um, I'm actually the same batch of students as now. So we matriculated together. And fun fact, um, we were the first batch of direct entry year one PPE students. Um, I have also a second major in philosophy. So I do PPE plus philosophy, so a little bit more in depth. Lah. Um, yeah, and the rest of the details in the sharing data as well. She couldn't get enough of philosophy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, please keep the questions coming in through the chat. We'll try our best to answer them. Uh, I, I do have slides and all that, but I don't think I'm going to go through all of it. Um, I want to maybe just touch on a few short points to make sure that we're all on the same page. And after that, I'm going to invite Nell and Kaylin to share a bit of their experience from the point of view of students. Because beyond a certain point, the, official, the kind of official information that people like Prof. Luke and myself represent, you can read in the websites. Right? But if you want to hear gossip, you become our actual students first, then you buy me coffee, then that's a different story. Okay, you know, but maybe not today, right? We're live streaming. But, uh, but maybe it, it would be good to have uh, Nell and uh, Kaylin share a bit from the students' experience. But let me go through a few um, short points about the program to make sure that we're all on the same page, all right? So joining established, right, 2018, um, you know, we became one of the inaugural CD, XDP, sorry. Now, one important thing to understand is that once we are XDP, once we are across the spring program within the CHS structure, the curriculum space that's been given to us is almost the size of a double major. So you do expect quite a bit of thing, uh, quite a bit of commitment doing PPE. PPE is no longer just a small little you know, single major. It, the size of it is almost the size of a double major. Okay, Which also means that 
we can expect students to do quite a bit of philosophy, quite a bit of pulse science, quite a bit of uh, econ. Okay, and we have a certain goal. We want to train a generation of broad-minded people, analysts and policy formulators, but I don't expect all of them to be in government service. I think it'll be very sad if all of them are in public service. I think I, I want to see my consultants, I want to see my people working as journalists, people who are out there doing NGOs. But maybe once every few batches, one poor starving artist, that's okay. But let's, let's try not to have too many of those. Okay, but you know, we, in other words, we want interesting people who want to use their minds, right? Who has empathy for society, for people. And to use our minds uh, and, and the skills we teach them, the interdisciplinary skills we teach them, the intellectual tools that they learn from the different uh, uh, disciplines here uh, to good effect out there in the world. Okay, um, The modules, they're all on the website, so I'm not going to go through them, but I just want to point out that this is not an indifferent collection of philosophy or Paul science or econs modules. There's, it's kind of curated. You look at the parts that are grayed out, those are prescriptive. We expect all students who have read all these as these particular modules, the gray ones, right? Why? Why do we do it this way? Because this is, we believe that this is where the, the three disciplines come and intersect with each other and we're laying good foundational training to make sure that our students are able to make use of very important skills and tool sets and insights from those three disciplines, right? So this is the reason why they hang together in that way, okay? Um, so, you know, so, so if you compare the, the size of the curriculum, as you can see for yourself, Right, so 45 plus 18, that's why uh, it is almost the size of a, a double major, right? Okay, uh, and, and PPE is compatible with NUS college and with the residential colleges and so, so forth. Um, we are not the only way to study social and political phenomena. We're not, definitely not the only multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary way to do so. You know, if you study sociology or anthropology or psychology, you are, you're going to end up studying society too, whether you like it or not. Right, or political science, or you know, for that matter, political science, econs, and, uh, and philosophy as single majors as well. Your interest is more important. It means that we are looking for the people, the kind of people who are ready to engage in all three. Right. So if you secretly at heart, what you really want to be is to do econs, then you just do econs. <laughs> okay. If secretly at heart, what you really want to do is you know to to you know go very very deep in uh, you know political science. Then of course it's kind of weird to be in in PPE, right? Don't treat us as just another version of one of these. Three. Rather, you are in PPE because you are especially interested in the intersection of the tree. Okay, so it's not just every part of philosophy you're interested in. Because if that's what you're interested in, then you should pursue a philosophy major, even as a second major or whatever it is. Okay, and the the program isn't about breath, right? There is a bit of breath in it, but it's really a targeted depth in the intersection, you're not doing any less 3,000 and 4,000 modules compared to other majors. It's something you need to be aware of. Environment process, I'm not worried about them. I'm not worried about these students at all. They are all so impressive and good. So, right, correct, right? Right now I'm killing, right? <laughs> so, so the first uh, cohort is graduating and uh, we'll be looking at them. Uh, I'm just kind of, uh, what's the word? I'm just kind of slightly annoyed, sad, happy that Quite a few of them got full paid, uh, you know, master's scholarships. So they are not going to show in my employment data. <laughs> but but uh, but they are doing very well. Our first cohort is doing very well. We will we will know exactly how you know how it goes by the end of the year, of course, when they do their first graduate employment uh, survey. But I'm not expecting any any issues there. Okay, um, um, you know, different different ways to come in. So I'm not going to say too much about that. Um. There is also a club that the students have formed all the way from the beginning. In fact, these students are so motivated. They came to beg us. Uh, the, the, they came with a whole plan about starting a club even before some of them were declared majors yet. They already were getting their act together. So I, I believe uh, both Nell and uh, Kaylin have been, you know, uh, Nell was in fact, uh, you know, in, in the ex core right? You are president of the club uh, in one of the previous years. Is it? Is that right? <laughs> you, hey, are you the P or VP? Uh? I can't remember. Oh, it's VP. Uh, you're a VP. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it was uh, Josh. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, so so they will they will be able to share a lot more about this. They have Instagram, but uh, please join us in the respective Telegram chat if you want to ask questions as well, especially for the prospective students. Okay, okay. Um, so Kelly and uh, now I want to take it away and share from the students' perspective. I know you all prepared something. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me let me try to share my screen. Mm. Yeah. Sorry. 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 Can I? Are you able to share? Yeah. Can, can, can. Okay. Just give me some time. Okay, hold on. I think it's still loading. 
Okay. Yeah. Can everybody see it? Yep. Can? Okay. So hi, hi guys. Uh, so I think we, Kaylin and I will just be sharing very briefly about like maybe the special things that we learned through our PP journey to give you a glimpse into what it's like being a PP student and maybe what is uh, more unique about our major that might be the defining difference for you. Lah. So I'll just start. So this is me in 2022, which is basically me now. So I'm a year three PT student and I do have a second major in history, as I mentioned. So I actually graduated from ACJC in 2019 and I matriculated in 2019. Uh, sorry, I graduated from ACJC in 2018, but I matriculated in 2019. So I'm a party anymore, but I have never really partied very hard because of COVID. So hoping to do that soon. And some of my hobbies are swimming and gaming. So I think when it comes to university, we all start with maybe a conception of who we want to be, or maybe you don't have one at all, in which like, you come to uni and you don't really know what to do. But when I think throughout your university journey, a lot of your expectations and your experiences will help you to mold this. So you kind of know what kind of person you might want to be in the future and maybe what job that you want. So in this sense, you are like a Pokemon, so you evolve throughout the years. So obviously, this was me in 2018, very fetus, right? Then I slowly, slowly, like, get, like, uh, somewhat taller and slimmer, like, a glow up, la. <laughs> hopefully. So, of course, but of course, PP, uh, as a major, did help me intellectually and in some ways, personally, throughout the growth of my life from 2018 until now. So I'll be sharing very, very shortly on that. So, Number one, I think the first thing that I learned from PP was to ask the very hard questions. So the three lenses of PP, I think you already know. Philosophy is really on how people think and reason. Politics analyzes the power dynamics between people, which define societies. And economics, of course, money runs the world. Lah. So majoring in PP is really like a quest to find out the good, the bad, and the ugly truths about the world because you are forced to examine the fundamentals of it. You really, really can't escape, and there's no easy way out. And this itself, I think, is a very valuable experience like personally and very intellectually. So if you're on a quest to find truth, yeah, I think PP might be actually a very, very good major for you. <laughs> and, and the best thing about this is that we actually have a very engaging student community, which Kaylin will talk about more in her slide. So, yeah. so I think the nature of the disciplines here allows us to engage with the fundamentals of the world such that I think every time I, I attend a PPE class or any of a uh, class in FAST actually I, I learn more about the world and I think that is very very refreshing for me even as I think especially as a young person uh, and even as an adult. So the second thing that I learned from PP is that we are actually very independent in our ambitions. But as Kaylin would tell you, we're actually quite tight-knit. So what I mean by independent in our ambitions is that because PP is a very new major, and I think we've only had like, the, I think the new cohort is only 40-ish people. So we have all learned to forge our own paths, and we, have, we all have our own uh, separate uh, passions and enthusiasms. But because we are such a small cohort, we tend to stick together quite a bit, which I really, really like. So just going through my very um, personal journey, sort of this academic or career journey. So I do have an interest in political economy and us sino relations. So that is something that I came into NUS with. That I knew that I liked to do, especially after doing the exposure modules and talking to my professors. So... In year two, I actually did an undergraduate research opportunity program with Prof Kim, who is the PS department here, and I did it on the Sino-US trade tech war. So this counted as a PPE module. It was very flexible. You can ask me more about it if you're interested, but it was a, really a stepping stone for my next opportunity, which is currently I'm in year three, right? So now I'm interning in MCI's industry division division and it is a policy making division since January. So I'm doing projects on the digital economy and the metaverse. And I am, I think, very glad to say that I drew on PT knowledge, uh, laterally and in depth to provide frameworks for actually on the ministry level for them to digest these issues. 
So yes, Prof Loy, like em employment wise, right? It it's working la. <laughs> Yeah, so very very glad for that. So yeah, I also interned in Hanko previously, which was a supply chain MNC. So it, even though PP might seem uh, from the start, uh, or, or rather from the onset, as a quite a a major that is very attuned to policy making. I think we have a lot of our graduates who are looking to go into the private sector as well. So more on that in the coming slides. So just last Saturday, I actually presented on PPX X, uh, times the metaverse, which is basically on how PP concepts can be used to analyze this Nesken domain. And I did this during PPX, which is a masterclass with Aaron, who, who is one of the deputy secretaries in the ministries, and he was and he's adjunct professor here now, teaching on specifically uh, PP topics just for this masterclass. And I think this was a very very enriching experience for me because I could I think for like really concretely use my PP concepts and apply it to something which I see which I work with in real life. So definitely, like PP is not or up in the air, which I thought it was, but now I am happily disproven that it's not. <laughs> so yes, this is like this has been, I think, one of the greatest milestones in my in my PP journey so far, academic journey wise. So in June, I'll be switching to intern in MPI's ASEAN Desk to work on the digital economy framework agreement, which I think if you all have been keeping track, it's quite a milestone agreement within ASEAN and they are still arguing about it, but it's all right. Yeah. So now when I say that our people are independent in ambitions, right? I really mean that we really go anywhere. So we have Sing Wei here who's going to Oxford. So he's one of your so-called <coughs> scholars. Lah. So he's going to global governance and policy, which is the top uh diplomacy slash international relations course in Oxford. So very, very proud of him. And those people who are orange in color like me going to MTI and Jamie had previously uh, interned in the Institute of Policy Studies. But you also have people who are going in the private sector who are labeled as green. So you have George who is going to grab and Ivan who had interned in bike dance for doing their ethical policy before. Very, very interesting. And he was actually, um, I think very focused on philosophy and ethics. So yeah, so it doesn't mean that if like you are more interested in philosophy, then you don't get a job. That's untrue. Yeah. <laughs> so it really, really depends on how you uh, curate your portfolio. I think with any other major or any other or like towards any other career that you are doing into what you really want to do. And of course, Sydney, who has uh, been in Shopee as yes, product management intern. But you also have, I think, uh, very importantly, our social uh, people who are interested into going into social services or NGOs. Nicole interned in the Singapore Council of Women's Organizations before, so she was doing uh, research on gender inequality. And also Kaylin also interned at the Community Rehabilitation Center um, who really tries to help youth drug offenders. So she's here with us today, so you can ask her more about that. Okay, so really quickly, the third thing that I want to express in my and flag out in my PP journey is that I actually found that there's genius in this madness. So the ultimate value of PP really comes from how it's so multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary. And I think once you start to have enough knowledge about the three disciplines on their own, you can very, very quickly start to see the interconnections between them, almost such that if you ignore them, it's like bugging you at the back of your mind. So that's what I think the PP majors really get towards. And a lot of our students have, of course, written papers and they have their own ideas about how to draw these interlinkages. So we have had our NUSPP undergraduate journal. The first one was called The Republic. So if you can see on the top right of the screen. So we do have uh, students who they submit their papers on their own accords and on their own like really initiative to the NUSPP club and then we help them to publish it. So this is an annual thing that you all can look forward to if you do join us. And of course, this is not only, um, uh, this is not limited to the upper year students. So the lower year students, you, you guys can do it as well. And I will encourage you to, in any major that you go to, not only PPE, but I think that this is a very good opportunity for you to grow your writing. And of course, PPE itself, it has 
a very good interconnectivity with the other disciplines such as history and business because you can really start to see how PPE is, I would say, omnipresent throughout past, present and the future. So it is very, very, I think, gives you a very good uh, in-depth understanding of how things have evolved in the world today and how things might evolve in the world tomorrow. Yeah. So that's all from me from now. So please feel free to ask any questions at the end uh, of our presentation. So I will now be handing my time over to Kaylin, who will go over the more uh, social life aspects of PP that you guys can expect when you're coming into our major. Yeah, Kaylin, please. Thank you. Now, do you want to continue sharing or do you want me to share? Yeah, I think I can help you move the slide. Okay, can. Thanks. Okay. So, thanks now um, for the very detailed sharing and I'll just give a very, very quick one too. So, um, this is me. Um, um, I also graduated um, in 2018 back from Hwa Chong and then I matriculated into FAST TPE in 2019. So, here are some of my academic interests. Comparative politics, philosophy of language, politics of language, philosophy of religion, politics of religion. Um, and my hobbies are gymming, hiking, biking, and eating mala. So you can kind of see like the previous three hobbies as kind of like feeding the last one. Yeah, so this is a mandatory um, evolution photo dump. So for me, being very, very dark when um, I was in my three-month canoeing stint back in Hua Chong. And then I shaved my head um, for half of hope. And then eventually my hair grew out. I came to Hua Chong. Um, that is, I think, the, the photo that I have um, for the PP Club website. And then the last one is me recently when I went out with now to actually eat ice cream. Okay, so very quickly, um, the first thing is the student life aspect um, of my experience here in PPE and US. So I actually served in the PPE club um, as a secretary. And the PPE club is actually something kind of like something like a student council for the PPE major. Um, and between 2020 to 2021, I actually served as secretary. And now was actually like sort of my lady boss because she was my vice president, right? And so together we actually planned the first ever PPE orientation for new PPE majors, which was something that we felt very strongly about because we ourselves didn't have any orientation like that. Um, and when we first came in, we were a bit lost and like we didn't even know like who were the other PPE majors in this huge FESS cohort. Yeah, so other initiatives organized by the PP club, um, which continue till now, so you get to enjoy them too, include our prep career talk series, beach day outings, and welfare pack initiatives and the like. So if you join PP club like me um, on the next slide, of course, you'll also get to form firm friendships with your fellow committee members and eventually get to see them in their natural habitats um, through our late night meetings. So for example, now here, um, this was actually in one of our late night events committee meetings when we were like trashing details out for a particular event that was gonna happen a few days after. Okay, so the second aspect of my life in PPE is, um, of course, we cannot escape studying. So study, study, study. Um, I actually was a former bicultural studies program scholar um, back in secondary school and JC. So I always knew that I was somewhat interested in political science, but not really sure what exactly. Um, I also wasn't too sure about the philosophy and economics aspects of our major. And in all honesty, I kind of joined this major because um, as a hybrid student back then, I couldn't really see myself studying just one thing um, throughout my four years in uni. So I applied to PPE um, and well, I got in and here I am today. So one of the biggest takeaways of my PPE journey here is actually that I gradually was able to discover what I'm truly interested in, which is primarily the intersection of politics and philosophy, seeing how one affects the other and challenging assumptions that people usually take for granted. So for instance, in a recent module on comparative political thought, we examined in class what it means to combat Western hegemony in political thought. And hint in, it goes way beyond just incorporating non-Western texts into our curriculum. I also took courses examining what it means to achieve justice and equity in society, where we examined the difficulties in incorporating responsibility into distributions of goods politically. And of course, one of the mainstays in my whole journey is plenty of consults and discussions with my professors and peers, which I learned a lot through. Okay, so the last part um, of my journey is internships. And um, on the next slide, well, you could see that if there is one word that I would use to describe PPE majors, it would be the word diverse. So as Nell has already shared, 
um, we have people who did internships at private firms, various ministries, and some even finance related jobs. And for me, I went to a nonprofit organization, Youth Guiders Art Services, to work with at risk youths. And eventually, I ended up obtaining um, the Singapore Prison Services clearance to become the very first female intern at the Community Rehabilitation Center, which caters to first time youth drug offenders aged between 16 and 21. So I ended up doing some work on digitalization and um, initiating a rewards program to incentivize positive behavior amongst the youths, creating lesson plans, mentoring them, um, conducting some Christian religious classes, and tutoring youths who are facing their end level soon. And if you ask me what relationship this internship has to the concrete content that I learned in PPE, I would say close to none or absolutely none. But this also really goes to show that the PPE major is not one that only caters to a narrow selection of people who are interested in policy or finance related work. Um, and some updates, um, so I'm actually going on to MOE to teach after I graduate from NUS. Um, and so in late June, I'll actually be going on a school attachment program and that's, that's basically my holiday plans. So for now, I'm quite free. <laughs> so um, in closing, I think we really, really welcome people with diverse interests in PPE. And what PPE offers us is a chance to hone our interdisciplinary thinking skills and really, really get to interact with a range of people with many interesting ideas. Okay, so with that, um, we end our sharing and we welcome any questions. Thank you. Thanks so much, Nell and uh, Kaylin. It's always good to have you. Um, yeah, let's take some questions on the floor because if not, I'm going to go find myself a coffee. <laughs> Luke, you want to say something? Yeah, well, people are still thinking. Yeah. Uh, just that, uh, well, thanks, Nell and Kaylin, for the presentations. It's uh, always good to. Um you know, uh, hear what people have made of it all in a, in a more informal way. So I hope uh, everyone enjoyed uh, listening to them both. Thank you. Yeah. All right, to our prospective students, um, it's actually really easy for you to ask questions. Just use the Zoom Q&A function, simply click on the Q&A tab and you will be able to ask questions. This is the perfect opportunity for you to ask any sort of doubts that you have because you have both professors and students from NUS right here. So yeah, yeah you click on the tab and you will be able to ask questions. Yeah, while you're thinking about that, let me uh, say something about the last part of what uh, uh, Kaling was sharing, you know, and it's actually an important point, right? We don't expect everyone here to learn things and then go find jobs that literally will, will be a literal, you know, kind of, you know, you apply that content knowledge. I think that's a very narrow way to think about university education in general, not just in PPE. Okay, um, I, they, I once hired, I mean, those of you who came from the previous session, I really said this, my first management associate in FASS theory was a life science major. She was doing comms and development work for us. She wasn't doing life science with us, right? So we are, we hope to give you an education that will train you broadly to be a useful and effective citizen in the world. Your specialization and knowledge will matter in the sense that many of you will do jobs where you use that knowledge quite intensively, okay? But definitely there will also be many others, maybe not the majority. Um, I wouldn't dare to know, you know I, I, my suspicion is that Kaylee is probably on the minority side, but it will not be like a vanishing minority. It's actually an important minority of people who, who learn all this because they are interested in it and it trains their mind, but they are doing things in their careers that don't literally like, you know, they take the knowledge and they apply it, right? Or you end up influencing them in ways that are not so straightforward, more intangible, right? Uh, but Nell's, uh, you know, intended outcome, I know, I know <laughs> she definitely wants a very policy-related kind of, I know, I know, I know that that's where you're going. Uh, at least that's your ambitions are. So I suspect that you know she'll tell me things like, "Oh yeah, yesterday I was looking at decision theory, and you know it's really applying." It. I know that you know she'll. But again, you know, I think it'd be very sad if literally everyone comes out in SK one cookie cutter way. I think you need to find yourself that's more important than anything else. Yeah. Um. Really, are no questions? Are really? <laughs> are there any questions? I know we are live streaming on Facebook as well. Oh, okay, there are some questions. I know we are live streaming on Facebook as well, so I don't know whether there are any questions coming in from there as well. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, we've got a few now in the in the Zoom chat that I can see. Do you want to take that first one, Loy? How were core disciplinary uh, modules chosen? Yeah, so it is a it's a complicated process, but I, I can tell you what I went through when I created this thing once upon a time. It was back all the way back in uh, 2017. Um, we went through different iterations. So it's partly about what the three departments feel that you know. Well, we think about it, right? So I asked the three department heads, if I give you a PP student, what do you think is important that the person knows from your discipline? So that's one part of the process. So some of these modules came from that direction. Um, the, another part of the input uh, actually came from prospective employers. Interesting, huh? Okay, so, so you know, I, you know, as part of the whole approval process, do you remember, I, I don't think I involved you, but I actually interviewed like 17, 20 over different uh, you know, senior HR people, you know, from ministries and even someone from Grab, someone from UOB and all that. A lot of ministries, many of them are alumni, so it's not difficult to find them. And they introduce others to me as well. So I have many, many coffees. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people from MINDEF, right? you know, because I talked to one and then he said, hey, please talk to the other group too. They are also very interested, you know. Um, so some of it came from there. So you'll be surprised, right? They may not name particular modules. That's not the way they would think, but they will say, can you make sure that all of them have done X or Y, right? So it's partly a matter of some of these things fitting together. Now, so so I won't, I don't think I want to show you all the inside of the sausage factory, like why this particular module, but when you think about it carefully, you think about in terms of the broad general skills and insights that we need you to have, you can tell a story. Even you can probably figure out why each of these things are, are needed for PPE major, right? So that's point number one. Point number two, don't forget that there's quite a bit of elective space, especially within uh, the philosophy part and the, even the post-science side, we do expect you to choose. So, so don't feel restricted. Make sure that you, know, you, you also explore your own interests. Okay? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, now and uh, Kaylin, do you, I, I know that sometimes in the early years, you also feel as if like, sometimes you, you know, do I absolutely need to study this? So this is also a little bit, not always very easy to explain to beginning students. At the yeah. yeah. Does anyone want to add something to that for the first question? So what about William? I mean, I think in a way the answer is related. What modules would you recommend taking up if you're interested in, uh, in PPE? Well, you know, we, we ask all our incoming PPE students to do the kind of 101 in the relevant subject. So I think that's probably the way forward. I mean, you could take something more advanced, but you know, why not just start by taking the intro modules, I suppose, uh, for the respective disciplines <coughs> and getting a, a taste that way. I don't know, Roy, what would you recommend there? Yeah. Um, wait, wait, wait. Before, let me circle back to the earlier thing first. So if the specific question is why PH3 to trio as opposed to some others, there's a longer story which I won't go into, but we need everyone to have normative theory. Not everyone is going to be so interested in the foundations of the uh, social sciences such that doing philosophy of social science will be critical, okay? If you're interested, the space exists for you to do that module, right? But you got to, if it's core, it's because, it, it can't just be because it is in the foundation, but it's core foundation. It's something we expect every PP student to have, something like that, okay? So, so, so that's a, it's, it's a bit more subtle than that. Sorry, Luke, you were, you were saying something about which modules to start with. Yeah, was the, that was the next question. And I just thought, well, the obvious thing is, you know, you, you do the 101, which if you're going to do PP, you would have to do anyway, right? So um, yes. that, that yeah. seems to me to be, you know, start with the very basics and see if you like it is, is, uh, is, is my response to that. Okay, so... We are restricted major, so not everyone can. We, we don't allow people to just walk in. So they do have to fulfill certain criteria before they're even allowed to declare the major, right? Uh, what I would say is, if you're not already, uh, you know, okay, let's say you are pursuing, I don't know, life sciences or psychology, or whatever. Um, those are good majors too, okay? You know, so don't always think that grass is green on us, somebody else's side. But, but if you're interested in PPE, then I will say there are four modules that you will consider. Definitely the three gateway modules, right? You will not enjoy PPE if you don't enjoy philosophy and political science and economics. Right, all three. Okay? There's one more module called PE2101, um, uh, Introduction to PPE. Right? Um, you can try 
going for that, but we're trying to keep that to the uh, cozy small class. So I'm, I'm not very keen on just opening the floodgates for that one. So, you know, you can, you can see whether you can get into that one, especially in your year two. Right? Okay. So, so, you know, definitely the three intros, the three gateway modules will be what you are, you're looking at. Uh, yeah, any advice uh, from the students for Nell and uh, Kaylin? Yeah. Or people who are not even coming in anywhere. Actually, we do have someone like that. Well, I remember Josh came all the way from computing, computer science, so it's not impossible. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so I mean, um, I think amongst our seniors, actually is the batch um, that is currently going to graduate um, the year of us. So we actually have one person like Josh who came from computer science and um, another person, Asha, who actually came from architecture and then they came in because um, in their year two and they realized that like PPE was created and then we were just so excited about it and decided to like just switch faculties and majors um, into PPE. Yeah, so I think um, like what Prof Liu and Pro Prof Loy have already mentioned, um, I think the obvious choice is definitely to always start with the three intro modules. Um, firstly, also because they're intro level and they already give you like a, like a very broad survey of the topics that are available in each, um, each, in each discipline. So you're, you're not going to expect like a very targeted or very in-depth study of a particular area of pole science or philosophy or economics. Um, but you'll get to see um, briefly what are the areas that you're going to cover. And so that will kind of give you um, a good sense of what are the areas that you could focus on in the future and whether you're, um, whether you're actually interested in them. Um, the second and very important point is so that when you actually take um, all these three intro modules, you will also be able to see whether you are um, you can adapt to the intellectual rigor of this particular major because PPE, I mean, what is slightly different about it from like um, other, other majors perhaps is also the fact that you need to code switch between the three constantly. Of course, there's like an intersection, there's like a common core that we focus on, but at the same time, you also are expected to apply quite different skill sets when you do each of the three disciplines. So for example, in Paul science, when I write essays, my job is essentially to synthesize, to analyze, and to um, come up with like um, and essays that have a, have a strong argument and essentially I'm engaging the literature, so on and so forth. Philosophy, one of the strongest, or one of the biggest um, difficulties that you might not face um, in the intro level module, but the intro level module, um, they are also very, very mind boggling. Let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, philosophy, one of the key things that you are able, you should be able to do is to be able to look at current topics and arguments and you think independently, come up with, uh, not say like a brand new argument, but an original and creative um, evaluation of what is already there. And you're expected to, in that sense, kind of create something new. Um, and economics, of course, um, in uni, it's a, a, a lot, a lot, a lot of math. <laughs> um, as you can tell, I'm probably like not super, super good at it. That's why I'm like hesitating when I say a lot of math. Um, but you do be, have to be able um, to have a suitable level of like adaptation and like a certain level of command of each of these three different skill sets. So the intro level modules are always a good place to start. Um, and you can also kind of see whether you're able to manage this um, switching within the same semester even, because sometimes you end up taking um, modules from all three disciplines in the same semester. Yeah. yeah. How coherent of a path must it be? So, so okay, so this is the question from Cha. Um, the, the small version of the answer is really this. If you look at the modular requirements on the website, look for the you know, PP page on the CHS website, right? Um, there are certain requirements, right? And then for Paul Science, there are sub few requirements and all that. In a sense, we already built in the required coherence. If you fulfill the requirements, there is certain coherence really, okay? So you shouldn't have to over worry about that. But of course, there is quite a bit of flexibility, especially for the philosophy part and to some degree uh, for the Paul Science part as well. The econs part is a bit more prescriptive. Right, but so that means that you you do want to say that okay, I want to you do have a choice. Okay, like let's say you have you know, several elective possibilities in philosophy. Do you want to go a bit deeper into history of philosophy? Am I the kind of person? Do I want to do things like philosophy or social science? In other words, I'm more interested in the foundations or the epistemology of the of the you know of the theories. Okay, then then you choose and then you know you you go ahead and do more. Uh, I I don't think you will somehow lose out necessarily if you are a little bit more scattered, even in that space, because the coherence that we want you to have, that we need you to have, is hard-coded. <laughs> so that one, you cannot escape, right? <laughs> you know? But more than that, uh, is, it will be your own interest. So don't, don't over it. And you have plenty of peers and seniors who have a lot of all kinds of opinions about, you know, 
you know, recommended study plans. They 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 will, they will write all these uh, in their secret reviews and you know, Google spreadsheets and all that. So don't worry about it. You know, you have plenty of people that you can talk to. Yeah, you think I don't know? I you know. <laughs> no, I know about that. Um, requirements of transferring into PPE. Okay, so it's actually on our website. It's on the CHS the PPE website. Uh, the short version is this: you would need to have done the three intro modules. With an, you need to get an A minus average out of the three. Okay, you don't need to have, you know, A minus for them for each of the three, but you must A minus average with nothing less than a B plus. Okay, and you are CAP or four point oh, but typically people who can do A minus average for the three, typically their CAP is usually like more than four, right? Um, so go and read the the website. Is that it is quite, it's quite demanding in a certain sense because I also need to be fair, right? Um, there are some. So in other words. Basically, there are two ways to get in. You either have kind of did well in the pre u thing and then you know impress us and come in, or you did well in year one. Right. So so it's one of these two things, right? Um, um yeah. So we we now in the past, the second intake, the transfer, we basically look at the, the scores, the grades, you know, the first year grades, and that's it. You, know, you walk in. Will we impose a, a you know another degree requirements where we need to see your uh, something else or whatever we haven't actually decided it because uh, this year is the first year where we're going to have transferred into the XDP program right so you know, wait and see I can't we'll, 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 we'll announce that uh, shortly yeah. uh, neither of you are second intake well, so you're <laughs> yeah but do you all perceive a difference do either of you perceive a difference between second intake people and first intake people I find the direct entry people are more chillax. You know why, right? Because you are in already. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, PB students are given priority for registration for PE coded modules, but PE coded modules are still open for non PB majors. That's right. Okay. Uh, so, so how difficult will it be will depend on the size of the, of the, of the class. We're trying to keep the class within reasonable limits because we want to be able to give good attention to the students. So, so that, that is the limitation. Uh, so it's very hard to predict because it depends on how big the PPE intake is and you know, how many people want to do the class in a particular year. Having said that, if we know that there is a lot of demand, then of course it gives us a lot of leverage to ask the relevant departments to see whether we want to run more, more of those classes. So we'll see. Uh, yeah. So was it very, but you are the PB student, so you wouldn't be able to say how easy or how hard it is to get into those modules. <laughs> I remember that there were quite a few non PB students even in the P3101 class, right? Wasn't it? Decision theory and social choice. Yeah. Yeah. What about 2101 when you all took it? Uh, were there a lot of non PB students? Yes. Actually, in our batch, it was, I think it was about 15 to 20%. 15 to 25% were non PP students. So if you are, I think, still interested to find out what PPE is, sure, you can come and please bid, bid for the module. And then you can come and find, find out if, like, it's, if that is really what you want to do. But yeah, but I think, I think 15 to 20% is a very, very good percentage for um, for. for um, for a uh, introduction module that is open to more than uh, just the majors, just the confirmed majors, especially for a restricted majors, major like us. Yeah, it's actually a yeah. quite a good percentage. So you don't have to be so worried about it. Yeah. Okay, we need to wrap up already. Uh, I'm being pinged that to watch my our time. I do need to go to a different talk very soon. But uh, there's one last question. Um, are there bridging modules for Econs? Or, no, no, there are no bridging modules for Econs. Econs 1101 is the bridging module. So don't worry about it. Econs 101, they don't assume that you have any background whatsoever. Right? They do expect to... In fact, a lot of FESS subjects, essentially, we basically treat the gateway module. We, we expect to bring you up to speed. So, so don't over worry about that. Uh, but the math, if you're worried about math, there is such a thing as a math bridging module. So you can look, look for it in the, in the, in the math uh, department. Thanks very much for being with us. Thanks so much, uh, Nell and Kaylin and Luke. Uh, you know, as usual, it's always good to see all of you, even though we had to do it online. <laughs> yeah. Uh, please, uh, uh, yeah, uh, please take it back, uh, Shatushan. Yeah. Right. 
Thank you, professors and students, for the really engaging question and answer session. So for those who are tuning in and, you know, or if you have more questions, please do email them to askchs at nus.edu.sg. All right. Thank you all for the questions once again. And before we conclude, we would like for you to participate in a quick poll. And as everyone takes some time to fill up the poll, I would like to highlight some of the other upcoming talks that we have. Do stay tuned on the next session where you can discover how you can enhance your CHS education beyond the classroom. Also, later, hear from our student presidents as they share their learning experiences as student leaders. And importantly, okay, we will also be having our physical open house on the 14th of May, this coming Saturday. So do come down and experience a slice of our vibrant campus life and find out more about the majors of your choice. If you're debating on whether, you know, should I go, should I come on Saturday, please do come. It is the perfect opportunity for you to talk to both professors and students. And on top of that, I feel that as much as you know, we have all these Zoom seminars, it does not come close to experiencing NUS physically, the campus, um, the students, and also the school culture. So do head down this Saturday, the 14th of May for our physical open house. All right, with that, now that the poll has ended, we have come to the end of the session. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to see you at the other upcoming sessions. We wish you a brilliant day ahead, and goodbye. Yeah, thanks for being with us. Goodbye. <laughs>